I've got a dog, I've got a wife. So I'm a vlog about my life. It's for fun, it's not for fame. And every day I'm gonna do it the same. They call me, call me Esca, call me Esca. Call me Esca, call me Esca. All right, so check it out. Recently, I've uh, I was uh, looking online and stuff. Let me start here. A couple of weeks. Okay, I'm gonna start from the beginning. Years ago, I lived at home with my parents. It was good times. Rent was free. Anyway, I used to have a computer, and uh, I actually had an extra computer on the side. And uh, what I did is I created that computer to be a server at home. And what it is is it was a place where me and my little brother were able to upload all our MP3s and share them with, um, with each other or basically with anyone we wanted to, per se. Not saying we did, I'm just saying if we wanted to, we could share them. But anyway, um, it was open through the internet. You know, it was password protected, but it was kind of cool because it was, it was easy to upload them uh, since it was our home network, but then it was also really easy to share the files with anybody we wanted to. And I thought, you know, I want to do that again today. Um, and so I figured out a way to do it that was super easy. And one of the things I really like about it is I can look it up on my iPhone and actually play the music through my server on my iPhone anywhere I am. Uh, I, don't, I can't stream it through, like, the, um, the media player on the iPhone, but I can, you know, open up a file if I really want to hear a song or I can even get a file from my computer if I wanted to. And let me tell you where I found it. It's called HFS, <clears throat> uh, HTTP File Server. You can find it at, let me tell you the address, it's R-E-J-E-T-T-O dot com uh, slash HFS. Okay, let me show you the website here. I'm going to use my camera, so bear with me here. This is their website, H HFS. HTTP file server. It's really easy to uh, to download. And what's cool about this software is that there's it's it's not there's no need to install it. Okay, the file you download is the file that the the software runs off of. So pretty much you download the file, you you run it, and you got this. Okay, you got your server software running. This is so easy to set up. Uh, I I didn't have any problems with this. And I'm going to show you in just a second here on how I did it, okay? Um, what you do is when you first start this up, you have basically no virtual file system. This is all empty, okay? And you just right-click here, and you can add folders or you can add files to your virtual file system. Your virtual file system is basically the files that you're sharing with the Internet or with, you know, wh wh wherever you want to connect. So, for example, say I want to add my, I don't know, my, fo my photos uh, directory to my virtual online server or whatever. Um, I'll go to Add Folder from Disk, <clears throat> okay, and I'll go to my, uh, you know, my C drive, and I'll go to Photos, and I'll click OK. All right, and up here a little box popped up, and it says to me, you know, uh, what kind of folder do you want? Do you want a real folder? <clears throat> a real folder is faster, good for big uh, you know, big folders. Basically, I think that means it runs straight off of your hard drive, or there's a vir virtual folder. I haven't really tried the virtual folder. Um, it says hint, most of the time you need real folders, so I always click real folder. It doesn't really matter to me. And there it is. It added my photos uh, directory to my virtual file system, and now it's available for me to get from anywhere I want via any computer um, <clears throat> or iPhone. Now, when you first set up this software and you, you, you get all your folders set up, you're going to want to go up to Menu and run a self-test. And what this does is it's going to test to see if your server is currently serving the, uh, the Internet. Uh, your, your server is always going to be available, you know, unless you have some weird Internet setup. Uh, it's going to be available via any local computer in your own network. And it's going to tell you the address right here at the top. It's going to tell you where you can find your files. Uh, really easy. You just type that address into anywhere you want, and voila, there you go. You've got your files from this computer available to any computer in your own wireless network or network or however you have your network at home set up. <clears throat> now, but that's not where it stops. And hold for one second here. I'm going to turn the camera back around. I set it up so that I can serve uh, any anybody. Zoom out a little bit. 
anybody in my uh, in the internet. And basically, it was a little bit more difficult to do that, uh, but not too difficult for me personally. I don't know about you and how computer oriented you are at home, but basically, what I needed to do was set up a what's called a, a port forwarding on my router, and my router was provided to me by my. Um, my internet service provider, okay? AT&T came in, they gave me my th their own router. It's a built-in Wi-Fi router all itself. I didn't have to go out and buy a Wi-Fi, you know, router or anything. It all came in one big box. And so I had to grab my information, look up to where I can set those, those things up. Um, I would tell you how to do it for yourself, but every router is different. Every, every company has a different way of doing it. Basically, what you have to do is you have to go to your router setup. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times you're going to want to just grab your router manual and look at it and look for where you want to, where, what address you're going to go to to set up your router. Usually it's like 162.194.0. something or something like that. Um, it's usually a, a, a number like that. And you just type it into your web browser and it'll connect to your router. And then your router uh, information will show up and it'll let you set up how you want to set up your router. And you're going to look for. Uh, port forwarding, and you're going to want to choose a port that you want to, sh you know, use uh, to share information through the internet. You can have any port number; it doesn't really matter. This HTTP file server software allows you to just pick a number, any number you want, and share it. Basically, what port forwarding is, um, in layman's terms, is it pops, it puts like a little pinhole, I guess, in your uh, your your network, so that information can come in and out of uh, your, essentially, your network or your computer or however you want to look at it. Um, so I popped a little hole into my uh, network port for using port forwarding, um, and I just picked a random number, uh, you know, a pretty long one just because I wanted one, and that was my, my hole, my network uh, hole for me to get files from. Um, you're going to want to, you know, obviously use the same number on the HTTP file server software as you do on your, when you go to set up the port forwarding. If you don't know how to set up port forwarding, you can't figure it out, uh, call the people who, who manufacture your router or call your ISP or whoever, because I've done that multiple times and it works really well. This dog really wants attention right now and he's just keeps bugging me. He always does it when I start making videos. Anyway, um... The next thing I did, which is really cool, I'm going to share this with you too, is your your ISP or your I sorry your IP address, which basically is the address. It's kind of like a home address, you know how your home has its own address. Your computer has its own address too. Um, but what happens is your address typically changes every time you either log out of the internet or reboot your computer or whatever. However, your your stuff set up, your address changes. And that makes it really hard to log into your uh, wireless or into your server if you don't remember the number or somebody at home rebooted your computer or something changed and you try to get to it through, say, your phone or through another computer somewhere and you can't get in. And there is another um, cool uh, piece of software that you can get. Let me show it to you. You know, it's funny is I don't even remember which one I used. But I'm about to find out, I believe. Yeah, here it is. Well, it doesn't really... I guess I don't even know if I can open the properties right now. Okay, it's not going to let me open the properties right now. Let me show you over here. It's called uh, it's called Dynip, or Dyne IMP, or Dynamic IP. And I'm just going to search it really quick. Yeah, dynip.com, okay? Basically, what this software does is, and there's a free one that'll work for a month, but you have to pay for it eventually. I know that kind of sucks to have to pay for it, um, but it's not really that expensive. I think it was like, let's see here, for one year, it's only 30 bucks. Okay, so let me explain to you what this does. This software, let's see, I don't know if I can show you with this camera. Um, it basically runs in your system tray. My computer, you know, my camera wants to be all dark or uh, bright or whichever you want to call it. It's that little, this little thing right here. There you go. Uh, dynamic client is active. Basically, what this does is it's sitting there and it's connected to the internet and it's sharing with the internet my current IP address 
zoom out, um, and it's forwarding. Okay, so right now, how do I explain this? I'm trying to figure out how to explain this in an easy way. It's saving my IP address that's currently running on my computer and forwarding that to a URL that I can easily remember. Okay, so you can have like, say, Eska, you know, Eska server dot dynip dot com. Okay, um, and it would have to be colon whatever port I picked for my, you know, my port for my port forwarding. But anyway, that's going to be the address to where I can get to my server. So basically, it never changes. It's always the same address. You could even use it to run like a little website or something. Um, and then you got a server set up. You can share it with people. You can set up usernames, logins, all that kind of information. And I can access it via my uh, my iPhone. And I use you just use I just use Safari. And basically, what I do is I'm doing it right now on my phone. That's why I'm looking down here. Is I just type in the address. And there it is, it's loading. Let's see if you can even see it. And voila, popped up, there it is. I'm on 3G right now, so it's not like I'm hooked up to my Wi-Fi network. And there it is, my server shows up, and I can log in, I can, look at, I can look at all my files, pick a file I want, and view it or listen to the MP3 file. So this is really cool software. I just want to share it with you really quick. Dynip.com, or again, the other place was J-R-E-J-E-T-T-O.com. Um, for the file server software. So that's it. My dog's scratching at the door. That's a quick vlog. Good information. Just thought it was kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to go take my dog outside so he can take a big old poo. So I hope that was uh, kind of helpful for you at home. Maybe. It's kind of cool for me. I like it. So, All right. See ya.